Good morning, y'all. Staying here from Rocky Creek. Welcome here on a good old work day morning. And a lot of you follow my channel because you're a full-time worker and you're wondering if you can homestead with a full-time job. And I tell you that you can, but you just have to make some adjustments and do what you can with the time that you have. And so literally this morning, you know, I've been trying to go to the gym. I've been trying to get back in shape. I've been trying to work on my health overall. So, you know, woke up at four o'clock this morning, went to the gym, came back home about five, 530 fed all the animals did all the stuff i could except for the piglets i uh, could not feed them because two of the four piglets are going to be going to the local university that we have to be castrated and for us there's a reason why we utilize them versus doing it here and we'll talk about that once we get them back but right now say a prayer for me because i have my work clothes on because i have just enough time to get them loaded up into my vehicle drove up there because about an hour and then to get back so i could be at work on time it's just one thing you got to do it's the day they could get it done so we're just going to hope that we can make it to work without being filthy and smelling like pig poop so let's hope this goes okay so one of the big thing is when i take them to be castrated they can't be fed that morning or at least they ask that they don't be so these guys have been loud as could be because they saw everybody else get fed but not them so i'm hoping i can just grab the two i need and we'll throw them into this dog crate i'll slide it forward and then we'll strap it down I know, even though you're not with them, you don't like nobody messing with your babies. I'm sorry. So guys, crisis averted. We've got them loaded up. They don't like being on that slick plastic and they're gonna slide around a little bit till we get on some flat ground. But I don't put any hay in here or straw because they want it to be as sterile of an environment when they get there. And typically I'll take them in one of these crates and since they're short enough, they shouldn't get too much wind on them. Otherwise I usually try to keep wind on them, but keeping them close to the cab, plus they're lower than the bed, I think they'll be just fine. But usually by taking them in the crate, they'll just unload the entire crate, put it on one of their rolling tables, take them on in. And then later on that day, they'll call me and let me know that they're ready. So we're gonna hit the road and get these guys to where they need to go. So it looks like they're actually riding pretty good. Good thing is with their fur, I can tell if the wind's getting on them too much and their fur's not moving at all. So I think between being right up at the cab and then being down a little lower, I don't think anything's getting to them. So that's pretty good to see. So guys, I don't think I could have asked for that loading to go any better than what it did. Um, and now what we'll do is instead of running the actual interstate, although that would be faster, um, I'm just gonna run an alternative route that runs parallel to the interstate. It allows me to go about 10 miles an hour slower. But the best thing is, is that if I notice there's an issue with these guys or anything like that, I can always pull over and it could just be overthinking it, but I feel like the quieter road with less big trucks and all that kind of stuff is gonna be less stress on the pigs. So we're gonna hope everything goes smooth today and we should be up there in about an hour.
Well, they made it here in one piece, but they used the bathroom everywhere. So guys, we got them here. And usually what we'll do is we gotta wait about 10 minutes for them to open, cause we're here right as they open. So that way I can make it to work on time. And, uh, but they got a big bay door that we pull around into and they offload them there. Uh, makes it super easy. The people here are awesome. This is probably my fifth or sixth time using their services for something. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better setup. Yes, it's an hour away, but I'm so thankful to have these guys. So we're gonna get them dropped off. They don't allow any recording inside of their facility um, without special permission. So we won't be able to do any of that, but we'll be back with you as soon as we get the call that they're ready. Guys, you can see them right there. We just picked them up. This guy here is off the hook though. I don't know what that anesthesia has done to him, but he keeps leaping up like a dog and standing up. I've never picked one up to be acting as crazy as this guy is right now. So I ain't sure what's going on with him. So y'all, everything actually went really well. The doctor said that since I got him done so young, it was actually a lot easier. Um, they were a little bit younger than our other ones that we've done in the past. And that was one thing I really wanted to do this year was make sure I got them done sooner. And I can clearly tell the difference. Uh, she said they went down really easy and they bounced back from anesthesia really easy as well. And they didn't even send me home with pain medicine this time. In the past, when I picked them up, they've been pretty zonked out and you know been very uncomfortable and I needed to give them some pain medicine for a day or two. But I was shocked to see how wide awake and energetic these guys already are. So hopefully that's not just some of the meds still working and that they actually feel that well. Um, so we'll get them back get them unloaded but yeah the one is like losing its mind it's like a it's like a little puppy dog back there jumping up and down i, I don't know it's got a lot of spring in its step it's kind of cracking me up i just hope he doesn't overdo it and end up boogering himself up but uh they told me if they end up with any issues just to call them get them squared away but let's get these guys home and let them start hanging out with their buddies This one and this one are the two that got fixed. You can tell by how they're walking a little bit, a little sore. And then I guess my only concern though is gonna be, clearly there's some kind of smell to whatever they had done that's got them kind of interested. So as long as they're just sniffing it and not actually like biting at it or nosing at it, I think they'd be all right. We'll just monitor them closely over. I'll probably check them. Well, I'll be heading back to work, but Mrs. Rocky Creek, I'll have her come out about every 30 minutes and check on them and make sure they're doing okay. Um, and then probably then starting tomorrow, we'll probably just check on them about every hour. If they get through the next 48 hours without any major issues, and I'm gonna say we're probably good to go. Three days later. You trying to cool off? Your two boys are back and they're all good. All right guys, it's been a couple of days now. Uh, it's been about three days since they were fixed that one's one of them and then that one is the other one and as you can tell by the way they're running around they're doing just fine it was really about right at 24 hours they were acting like their normal selves so they bounced back really really quickly hey can y'all stop hey hey move move don't bite my feet okay this is my seat. Can you move, please? Can you move, please? All right, guys, let's see if we can get through this without them biting my toes. Um, so real quickly, as we get ready to wrap things up from this video, let's talk about why do I take them to get castrated by a local university versus doing it myself. Hey, stop. Guys, sitting on that bucket is not working at all. They are just a complete 
They can't help themselves. They are entirely too curious and they won't leave me alone. So we may end up having to finish this outside of the pen. Way to go, dum dum. So maybe I can wrap this up while they're messing with the bucket. So as I was saying, to me, taking them to a facility where there's a sterile environment, they can give them medicine um, and anesthesia and things of that nature to where it makes it a lot more comfortable on them, to me, is worth it. But I also use it as an opportunity as that's a time that the vet can give them an overall assessment and their overall health and to let me know of any concerns that they may have, particularly while they're at this very young age. And on a good note, they give me the report on the pigs and the assessments on, on both pigs were very good. Uh, one of them weighed, at, weighed in at 28.8 pounds, the other one at 29.6 pounds. And overall, there was nothing of concern with them. And there, yes, I didn't get all four of them checked out, but they all act and look very similar to one another. So if two out of the four checked out really good, then it gives me peace of mind knowing that the other two are gonna be good to go. So the reality is too that not one pig, I'm not saying that a pig is less valuable than another breed of pig, but the reality is is that to buy Cooney Coonies is a bit more pricey than to buy like a standard feeder pig uh, breed. And so for us, especially in our area, there's not many Cooney Cooney breeders. So I, we pay a, a fair price. They're not overly expensive, but I could get other breeds for far cheaper. And so for me, it's better to invest a little bit of money to ensure that they have good, effective, proper medical care for things such as this and, and reduce the risk of me losing my entire investment than trying to do it on my own to save a little bit of money on the front end and end up losing a lot in the back end. So for us, that is why we opt to take them to the vet versus doing it ourselves. But despite how you choose to do it, the one thing that is for sure is that all four of these guys are super cute and they are super healthy as of right now. So hopefully we'll continue this track and everything will finish really well. And we'll end up with two pigs that we can take for processing in about a year's time from now. And then the other two, hopefully we can use as breeder pigs in the future. So guys, I wish I could have shown you some more on how that facility set up and how all they operate. But unfortunately, you know, we're just not allowed to do so without special permission. But hopefully this at least gives you an idea of what's going on with the piglets, how they're doing, and why we opted to go through professionals for their castration versus doing it on our own. I appreciate the curiosity of a Cooney Cooney piglet, but they are making filming very difficult. So guys, I think since they're just gonna follow me around and something about the orange shoelaces on my shoes is what really gets their interest. I think this is probably about the best time of any to go ahead and wrap up this video. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Hope you enjoyed seeing the little cute piglets and their little weird ways of how they act particularly on the way back from the vet's office. But guys, we've been getting a ton of questions on Cooney Coonies here lately. I usually don't go more than about three or four days without getting some kind of an email from somebody asking questions about their Cooney Coonies as they're getting ready to get into the adventure or they're exploring Cooney Coonies. And so I think I'm gonna end up doing a video here very soon, I'd say within the next one or two videos, where I'm gonna try to give you some of my top reasons as to why I raise them, but also some things to understand and what could be baby cons to raising Cooney Cooney so you can make a better educated decision as to whether or not it's gonna be the right breed for you. For us, we love them and we'll talk more about that in the future, but right now, all four overall are doing great. Hopefully we'll continue this path and we appreciate y'all coming along with us along the way. So guys, y'all take care of yourselves, y'all be good, and we'll see you here very soon on one of our next episodes. Bye guys. I'm gonna tell you bye bye. You want to tell him bye? You, you want to? No? What about you? No? You just going to sleep over there? Yeah? <laughs>